Well, this was a requested video, so I'm going to do my best on it. Um, it's a video all about camouflages. And um, what I want to go into really is the theory behind how camouflage works, and why some camouflages are better than others, and um, you know, different things to think about when choosing a camouflage because it's a bit more complicated than fit, you know, people initially assume. So I'm going to run you all through the camouflages I have here. And obviously bear in mind there are loads and loads of different camouflages. I have even more types than this, but I'm not going to be able to all fit them in frame. And some of them are just similar to other patterns with you know, slightly different colours. So let's go through these camouflages. I'm just going to open this door here in the attempt at hopefully putting a bit more sunlight in, but I don't think we're going to really get it. But okay. So, I've got um, 90s terrorist uh, camo trousers on, the red and, um, you know, red and white and black ones. These aren't really proper camos, but uh, they're quite fun. So, anyway, you've got British Desert, I'm assuming it's called Desert 95. It was the one that was used for quite a while until it was replaced by Multicam. And this is one of the most effective desert camouflages ever made, the reason being that it's um, only got two colours on it, which is something I'm going to come back to. But both of them are quite pale colours. You've got like a darkish brown or a mid-brown, and you've got a light brown or sort of grey colour. Then you've got MTP or multi-terrain pattern that replaced it, very similar to American Multicam. And this one is basically where it's designed so it can be used in both desert and woodland to a degree and it's where it mostly just uses pale browns and greens so it should blend in mostly anywhere. To the right of this we have German Flectarn, um, this is obviously the modern German one, not the World War II German one, um, but this is mostly designed as a woodland camo, um, it's got various greens and browns in it. I like Flectarn but it's a bit too dark which is something we're going to come back to. Next we have British 95 Woodland, um, and this is the version that's printed on raincoats. Basically, when Britain uh, did 95 Woodlands and some of the other Woodlands, they had a slightly lighter and darker variant. The lighter variant works better, which again I'm going to come on to. Um, here's a Yug Yugoslav or Serbian um, camouflage from the 90s. Um, it's very good, I think it's called maybe M93 camo. And the reason I like this one is it's a Woodland ones, but the colours are more muted and lighter than say the Flectarn. You can probably tell by looking at them that the colours aren't as uh, dark on that, which makes it good. And here we have East German Strictarn, which is one of my favourite camos, and it's a good camo because it's very bland. It picks up a lot of ambient light, so it tends to shade the look like the right shade of what's around you. If you're in an area of lots of green light coming through the trees and the leaves, um, it looks green. If you're in somewhere where it's muddy and dirty, it looks brown. If you're in an urban area or a snowy area, it looks more white or grey. So it picks up ambient light very well, which makes it a really good camo. But anyway, what I want to talk about is the theory behind how camouflages actually work. And there's two things to consider. It's the colour of the environment you're in. So if you're in woodland, it's obviously going to be mostly green. Um, if you're in the desert, it's going to be more yellow or brown, that sort of thing and the disruptive pattern. Now, obviously, what most camouflages try to do is match the colours, so you should be able to see with both Multicam, the Flectarn, the British 95, and the Yugoslav one, they're made in kind of green and brown colours that are meant to, you know, represent woodland. The problem with a lot of camos is that they end up being too dark. Now, the problem... I'll try and explain this. The, um idea is that obviously if you go out in the woods there's lots of different shades of plants so you have bright greens dark greens you have browns and everything else um, but if there's shade now I want you to actually think about this properly because it seems a lot of people don't when they design camos and there's some good articles on this if I remember I'll put them in the video description let's say you have a um, like a pair of camos so let's take in the multicam because it's a lighter color again I apologize for the poor lighting in here but I can't really do it very well. So you either have the multi-cam multi or the Strictarn, or the German Raindrop, and um, or the British Desert for that degree, or the Yugoslav one regardless. If you have a lightish camo and you step into the shade, it will appear darker because you're in the shade, just as if plants are in the shade, they appear darker. The problem is that when a lot of camos are designed, the person designing the camo assumes that you need dark areas on the camo because if there aren't dark areas on the camo, um, you basically won't have it work in the shade. So then you get something like Flectarn, and while I really like Flectarn as a camouflage, it ends up becoming too dark. Because 
if you watch people doing tests of flecton, unless you're in the deepest, darkest woods, what ends up happening is the person with the flecton is darker than their surroundings, so they become a silhouette. And that's the problem a lot of camos have, where they try too hard to get the colours right, but they don't actually, they make them too dark, basically, and then the camo doesn't work. Um, now, one of the big problems with lots of camos is, you'll notice on a few camos that they have black in them, black doesn't really occur as a natural colour in nature. So, what I mean is if you go out into the woods, look at the trees there, all the bark's going to be browns, really. If you look at the mud, it's going to be a brown. If you look at the leaves, they're going to be green. You won't really see, you know, naturally occurring black unless you're in an area which somehow has like volcanic rock or something, which isn't where these camos are designed for. So, you've already got a cam uh, like colour in the camo that's darker than its surroundings. So, what you have of these is really lighter colours are better. So that's the reason that Strictarn ends up blending so well to its environment, is because it's a lighter coloured camo, it picks up you know the light around it and seems to appear a similar colour. So lighter camos in general work better. Unless you're in somewhere that's really dark, I'd always go for a lighter camo because the shade will naturally make your camo appear darker when you're around it. Now Another thing as well is camos can sometimes surprisingly work in environments they're not meant to work in. Now, this is obviously why camos like Multicam came around, was to you know try and make a camo that would work in more than one environment, and it's basically by just having mild greens and browns, you know, that you'd find in most areas. Um, but British Desert on the left, there's a good video of a guy who um, tests camos. I'm going to try and link to his channel in the description if I remember it. And he tried, uh, I think it's in Texas he is, but anyway, he tried it somewhere in America in the winter. And funny enough, in Woodland in Texas, if, let's just say Texas for an example point of video, in the winter, it turned out British um, Desert works better than lots and lots of proper woodland camouflages, which is quite funny, because it just picks up ambient light wow and it matches its surroundings. It's also meant to be a very good camo for urban British Desert, because, it, you know, against concrete, it's not that, you know, brilliant. And the other thing about camos we need to talk about is disruptive patterns. And that's what the splodges are for on camos. So, you'll notice that the Flecton has very small splodges, whereas the British Desert, where I said it's good because it's two-tone, has very large splodges in comparison. The Yugoslav camo has pretty good splodges, but the Strictarn's sadly lacking when it comes to um, disruptive pattern. So, what disruptive pattern is, it's the idea that you're not going to... Um, want your outline to show because a human eye is very good at picking out another human's outline. So the idea behind disruption rather than colour matching is that you shouldn't appear as a person from further away. The idea is that if the splodges are big enough and in slightly different colours the eye will see the splodges not the person wearing it and they'll assume it's several smaller things from further away. Now the problem that lots of cameras have like the Flecton is they make the splodges too small that's good at close up, but further away it means that the camo blends into just one colour, and it again means you see the person as a silhouette. Um, when the camo has big splodges, like the British Desert does, it ends up being far better at a distance, because that um, you know ends up meaning the person doesn't actually look all that much like a person, it ends up making them look like various blocks, which is what you want. Now, what I personally like to do if I wear camo is mismatch camo, so where so let's say wear the multicam with the Yugoslav jacket or the multicam with the flecked arm. And the reason for that is, or the MTP even, um, is that basically I have a theory, and it's some special forces do this as well, that if you're wearing two different types of camo, both with different disruptive patterns on and slightly different shades, it should be even harder to be seen wearing it than if you're just wearing one type of thing. Because if you're wearing two, it's harder, it's going to divide your silhouette a bit more than if you're wearing one. Obviously, it means that the weaker section of your camo might always be visible. But another thing to bear in mind is in lots of environments, the plants and that end up being different colours at different levels. So you might notice this in woodland, for example, or you might notice this um, if you go out somewhere like in a marsh where there's lots of reeds. That up until like mid height um, or your leg height, you're going to have various coloured plants and the upper half is going to be different coloured. So if you're in a specific environment, by mismatching camo, you can actually get your legs to blend in better with the bottom level, level and your top half to bend, uh, blend in more of the top level. Bit of a tongue twister video, um, my apologies, but hopefully that's something to think about. 
If you are interested in some of these camos on my channel, there is a couple of videos if you search for them where I have tested camos. Again, I really like the strict on it blends very well, but it doesn't disrupt very well. Um, another thing to point out before I forget in this video is the camo is only as good as the person wearing it. As in, what you need to be doing if you're wearing camouflage and wanting to be hidden is understanding how to break up your silhouette. So, for example, you don't um, stand on a ridge where you can be seen as a silhouette. Um, for example, if you're walking across a field, you don't walk through the middle of the field, you walk along next to the tree line. That way, if somebody looks into the field and you're walking along the edge, you should blend with the trees, hopefully, and you're less visible. The eyes drawn to movement, which is something that normally gives people away wearing camo. And another thing, obviously, is to, as I was saying, make sure you don't silhouette yourself. So if possible, crouch down in bushes, or another good thing is to stand next to a tree, because you can't be see the bulk of you can't be seen, you know, over the tree bark, in a sense. So as long as the colours are relatively good, you'll just look like part of the tree's bark. Um, so, you know, there's lots of things like that. Again, like, you might want to put paint on and stuff on your exposed skin, but for the most part, it's about not making an obvious silhouette of yourself. So... There you go, that's uh, my video summed up on camos, as I said look on my channel for the camo videos if you're interested in ones where I've tested them, I might test some more camos if I've got somebody to go out with me and do it, because whenever I've gone out on my own and I've tried to take you know, a selfie wearing the camo next to something, you can't hold the phone very far away and I'm going to refuse to get one of those stupid selfie sticks, so um, you can't really get an idea of the environment around the person when you've got somebody else you can get them to take the picture while you stand somewhere in the frame and then you know you can test how well the camo works that way um, but as said some of these camos will work in places you wouldn't expect them to work um, I think the perfect camo would be similar to what they've done with multicam you get the very bland colour of East German Strictarm so what you want to do is you want to mix coyote brown and olive drab, I think are the two names of the camos, and you want to do them in a big splodge pattern like British 95 Desert. And then what happens is you have a very bland camouflage that should work absolutely everywhere, pick up lots of ambient light, but the two colours should still be distinct enough at a distance that it doesn't appear as one thing. So there you go, that's a video all about camouflage. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm going to try and remember to put in descriptions links to articles or channels that mostly talk about camo and they're very informed about it so there you go of course a camo like this is actually blatantly the best one